Welcome to our review on motion. So the first thing we're going to have a think about is how we can work out the speed of different objects. And in order to do this, we need to be able to measure the distance and the time. So depending on which object we're trying to measure the speed of will determine the method we would choose. So for example, as a 100 meter sprinter, for example, we'd use a tape measure to measure the distance. And then to work out the time, it would actually be an electronic timer that has a pressure sensor to start it, which is on the blocks, and then a laser broken at the end to stop it. If we're thinking about a car, then we've got the speed camera or speed gun. So again, we've got some kind of a distance. We could use a trundle wheel to mark the road with our speed camera, for example. And then when it takes that photo, it actually takes two photos very shortly, one after the other. So the time between the two photos is known. We know the distance between the marks on the road, so it can then calculate the speed the car was going. If we're talking about any moving object at all, we can use a sat nav because that uses three satellites to compare the distance to those three satellites from the object and then an electronic timer as well. So just think carefully about the scenario they give you. How would be best to work out the distance? How would be best to work out the time? An example of the kind of question we could get about our motion is here. Calculate the speed of a cyclist on a bike who travels 500 meters in 120 seconds Give your answer to three significant figures and include the units. So the first thing we're going to do is highlight, circle, underline or jot down the important bits of information from our question, which I've done in red there. Then we need to recall our formula, which in this case is speed is distance divided by time. Substitute in our values, checking that they're in the right units and then divide that using a calculator. So 500 divided by 120 gives us an answer of 4.17 to three significant figures. A second more complex way they could ask you to calculate the speed is given here. Calculate the speed of a cyclist on a bike with wheels of diameter 60 centimeters if the time between pulses for one rotation is 0.3 seconds. So the first thing we need to do is highlight, circle or underline or jot down the key bits of information from our question. Double check the units, and in this case, we've got the diameter in centimetres. So we need to convert that to metres by dividing by 100. The next thing we need to do is bring in a bit of our maths knowledge here, which, yes, I know it's truly shocking asking you to know both maths and science for an exam, but they could. So hopefully you do know from your maths lessons that to work out the circumference is pi times diameter. So in this case, we've got the diameter, so we can do pi times 0.6 gives us 1.88, etc. Then what we need to do is using our speed is distance divided by time formula, substitute that in. So we've got 1.88 divided by 0.3 gives us 6.28 meters per second. So the reason we've got this table here is because one of the things that they're expecting you to be able to do is to recall typical speeds in a range of everyday situations. So while I don't suggest you sit there and memorize absolutely everything on this table, because it is an estimate. So what we're going to be able to do here is you're going to have a little look and just memorize a couple of them. So if you remember that a person walking is about one meter per second or 2.2 miles an hour and a cyclist is about seven meters per second or 15 miles an hour, then that might help you out with being able to then carry out their estimates they could ask you to do on the exam. But I would suggest you remember at least one fast and one slow object for reference in case they ask you in the exam. The next thing they could ask you to do is to calculate the acceleration of a cyclist who reaches a top speed of 5.3 meters per second in 10 seconds. So because this is a calculation question, the first thing we do is we highlight, circle, underline or jot down the key bits of information that we might need to use. Then we need to recall our formula for acceleration, which is the change in speed divided by the time. Substitute in the values from our question there and then work it out on our calculator. Remembering to show our working in the answer space as well, just in case we have a problem using our calculator in the exam, at least we get some marks rather than no marks. The last thing to consider here are two terms that we could use with regards to data. 
we could use the term precise or accurate and they don't mean the same thing so when we're talking about data being precise that's data that's got a small range when repeated whereas if we refer to accurate data that's data that's close to the true value so make sure you do remember the difference between precise and accurate Hopefully at the end of this video, you can describe how to measure distance and time in a range of scenarios. You can recall typical speeds in a range of everyday situations. You can estimate the magnitudes of everyday accelerations and make calculations in order to convert units and also compare accelerations and speeds.